Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Zach Hancock, and I'm an evolutionary biologist that specializes in population genetics, phylogenetics, and genome evolution. Like most biologists, I also have what is called my study organism, which is a species or clade that I use as an empirical model to test my theoretical and statistical results against. For example, Many biologists use the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, to ask questions about speciation, chromosome evolution, etc. Others use the weed, Arabidopsis thaliana, to ask similar questions, but focused instead on a plant. My model is a bit different. Unlike Drosophila and Arabidopsis, which have been used in molecular labs for nearly a hundred years at this point, my organism of study is much poorer studied. In fact, this family of organisms has received so little attention that we don't even have a good idea how many species there are. You might think that this is because they're rare, but you'd be wrong. They're incredibly abundant and play a key role in the ecosystem in which they live. If you live near a coast and have access to a sandy beach, you can find them by the hundreds with just a hand shovel and a sieve plate. They're called Hosteriid amphipods. What's their common name, you ask? They don't have one. Unlike most vertebrates and some insects that have common names, many invertebrates don't. Uh, that's because they're so incredibly diverse and because most humans will never encounter them in their day-to-day -day life, we just don't bother giving them common names. But let's try. Let's call them beach scuds. If you're a freshwater angler, you might be familiar with the term scud. Uh, this is because the diet of many fish, such as trout, is predominantly made up of amphipods. Uh, if you know how to spot them and you know what kind of water bodies they do well in, you'll have a good idea of what kind of fish you might find in a given pond, stream, or lake. So beach scuds are the group of scuds that live on sandy beaches. But wait. Be sure you're not confusing them with sandhoppers or beach fleas, which are also amphipods or scuds, uh, but are completely terrestrial. You can find these little guys under driftwood or in recently washed up seaweed. Hosteriids or beach scuds uh, live in what is called the swash zone. This is a part of the beach where the tide washes in and so is always wet, but only inundated at high tide. They live in the first one to eight centimeters of sand, depending on the tide level. Now, they're not alone in this zone. If you go out to dig them up, you'll find a lot of other critters in the sand too. These include polychaete worms, coquina clams, mole crabs, and if you're lucky, the occasional juvenile Caridian shrimp. Beach scuds are fascinating for many reasons. One, they're exceptional burrowers. They're actually modified, they've actually modified their front legs into a kind of shovel that allows them to rapidly burrow into the sand. They're also blind despite having very large eyes. Uh, as you can see, uh, they're white, lacking any pigment. But that doesn't bother them, given that they live their entire life in the sand. We suspect they detect mates by hormonal cues in the water column, but we don't really know. We also think they may follow the tide cycle up and down the beach, but again, those studies are still in their infancy. Isn't it amazing that in almost 2023, there are still organisms that we don't know their basic life history? During graduate school, I began investigating beach scuds at the molecular level. I discovered that the family originated during the Eocene over 30 million years ago, and that they likely arose following the Chesapeake Bay impact crater uh, that decimated marine life along the northern Atlantic coastline, opening up a new niche uh, that allowed these beach scuds to rapidly fill. I also discovered that they have gigantic genomes, some as much as four times the size of ours. My graduate work led to, this, to the description of several new species, but there are still many more to be discovered. The beach scuds are not unique in being understudied. In fact, the vast majority of invertebrate taxa are understudied. We don't know much about their life history, their evolution, their diversity, etc. Even for groups relatively well, well characterized, many of them have no genomic sequences yet, meaning that our understanding of their genomic architecture is still in its infancy. As we enter the new year, my resolution is to guide you through the fascinating world of invertebrate evolution. 
You've seen from me videos on creationism versus evolution, population genetics, genome evolution, etc. But the real cutting edge of biology, of biological research, in my opinion, lies with the systematics and evolution of the invertebrates. They represent the vast majority of life on this planet. The most diverse vertebrate group has only a tiny fraction of the diversity of the invertebrates. Indeed, there are more species of beetle than there are every single vertebrate species combined. Because of the incredible success and diversity of the invertebrates, they also serve as excellent models to better understand the principles of evolution. We will go through the amazing diversity of lifestyles, mating and reproductive strategies, from parasites to mutualists, predators to prey. I will try to focus on the most bizarre and curious taxa, uh, the most menacing parasites, and the most beautiful body plans to really try to shock and awe you with the diversity of the inverts. At each point, however, I will stress how much we still have to learn, how many taxa have yet to be described and thoroughly investigated. The first time I saw an amphipod under a microscope, I was blown away. It was the coolest, weirdest thing that I'd ever seen. I knew from that moment that I wanted to study them. Any of you that may be interested in biology, but aren't yet sure what you would study or what you could possibly contribute, this series is for you. Because despite what you might have been told, we still know only a tiny fraction of life's diversity. And even of those species described, we know so little about how they actually live, their actual natural history. My goal for this series is once a week, I will release a short 10 to 15 minute video on a new invertebrate group. We will be working our way through a textbook that I used uh, during grad school uh, for an invertebrate zoology lab. We will start with the protozoa, then we will move to the periphera, the cnidaria, etc., working our way all the way up to the ecdysozoans and the deuterostomes. Uh, if these words don't mean anything to you now, don't worry. You'll know them intimately by the time we're done. I'm very excited about this new series, and I hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you the first week of the new year, where we will be starting with the origin of the eukaryotic cell and the diversity of the protozoa. See you there.